As Elara steps into the courtroom, a wave of whispers washes over the crowd. I regretfully testify against my lady. I observed her in actions that betray the crown. It's the truth. This is a misunderstanding. I swear I've never committed such acts. The evidence against Lady Valtor is significant. We must proceed with the sentencing. But I am innocent. This is a travesty of justice. I need to make a choice. I will not plead for mercy. I stand by my choices regardless of the consequences. Her words resonate with a few in the crowd, but the shadow of doubt has been cast too deeply. Lady Alara Valtor, you have been found guilty. The sentence is execution by the life carver. The judge, unmoved by Alara's defense, calls upon the life carver. The courtroom falls into a hushed, eerie silence as the sentence is about to be delivered. No, this cannot be my end. As the life carver approaches, a sense of dread fills the air. Ilara feels as her life is drained out of her. In these final moments, Ilara's life flashes before her eyes, the laughter, the tears, the dreams unfulfilled, and then darkness. Where, where am I? You're in the carriage, Lady Alara. Are you feeling unwell? What should I do? Ilara sits silently, her mind racing to piece figure out where she is. She remembers that she is on her way to a banquet and fell asleep in the carriage. My lady, would you care for some crystallized rune? It's known for its soothing effects. I've brought some just in case you might need it. Let me think. No, thank you. I prefer to stay alert and clear-headed. Alara politely declines the offer. The ballroom buzzes with the celebration of a newborn life in Lady Isolde Harrow's household. Yet Alara's choice of a black dress amidst the sea of bright colors draws critical eyes. As the evening unfolds, Elara finds herself approached by a well-dressed noblewoman, Lady Isolde Harrow, the organizer of tonight's event. Elara, my dear, it is so nice to see you today. I must say your dress really suits you. I do hope you find tonight's festivities to your liking. Isolde Harrow continues to blabber. I've spared no expense on the servants, decorations and delicacies. Yet I fear I can't quite rival your extravagant autumn ball. Might you share some of your secrets? Clara raises an eyebrow, taking in Lady Isolde's eager expression. Let me think. My dear, the secret is indulgence. Spare no expense, cater to every whim. It's not just a ball. It's an experience, a fantasy brought to life. An experience, of course. How wonderfully put, Lady Alara. Last year's ball was the talk of the season. I assume you're hosting it again this year. I'd be ever so grateful for an early invitation. Elara considers Lady Isolde's flattery, the eagerness in her eyes. I need to make a choice. Certainly, Lady Isolde. Your enthusiasm is charming. Expect an invitation with your name on it? Oh, you are too kind, Lady Elara. I eagerly await it. As their conversation draws to a close, Lady Isolde departs. Two women arrive before Ilara. Lady Alara, your attire is quite somber for a celebration. It's almost disrespectful. Indeed, it's quite the topic of conversation. It does seem to align with your reputation for being different. My attire reflects my mood, not the occasion. I see no reason to pretend otherwise. I have better things to attend to than discussing fashion. Elara dismisses their comments with a wave of her hand, walking away. 
Ilara turns to leave, but the young noblewoman, egged on by her peers, makes a brash decision. With a shaky hand and a look of regret, she steps forward, splashing wine onto Ilara's dress. Her voice is barely a whisper, clearly frightened. A dash of colour for the evening. I'm, I'm so sorry, Lady Ilara. My lady, that was most uncalled for. I shall return to the mansion immediately and bring you a fresh gown. Elara looks down at the spreading stain, then back at the young woman's terrified face. The ballroom is silent, waiting for her reaction. What do I want to do? Well, at least now the dress is more festive. Off you go. Fetch something more colorful for me. The maid gives a small smile and quickly leaves the ballroom, while the crowd chuckles at Ilara's light-hearted approach. The evening air is cool and refreshing on the balcony, a stark contrast to the heated atmosphere of the ballroom. Ilara steps out, seeking a moment of solitude. The balcony overlooks a beautifully lit garden, its pathways meandering through an array of colorful flowers and elegantly trimmed hedges. The soft glow of lanterns creates a serene ambiance. Away from the prying eyes and endless gossip, just for a moment. Lost in her thoughts, she gazes out over the garden, reflecting on the evening's events. Her moment of solitude is interrupted as Lord Caius Marlowe steps onto the balcony, a glass of wine in hand. Lady Alara escaping the drama or just seeking a better view? Lord Marlowe, I didn't expect to find you here. Caius offers her a glass of wine, his expression unreadable in the moonlight. A peace offering, perhaps? The night is still young. And what brings you to my refuge? Bored with the crowd? Elara accepts the wine, her gaze still fixed on the garden below. Just taking in the view. Your presence tonight has been as grandiose and divisive as ever. I'm surprised you've deigned to converse with someone as divisive as myself. I do prefer it out here. They stand side by side, the night air filled with the distant sound of music and chatter from the ballroom. Let's talk business, Alara. I've heard about your inheritance, the restaurant in the capital. My restaurant? What interest do you have in that? It's not generating any profit, is it? Not a great asset for you to have. Only headache. I propose a deal. I take it off your hands for a generous sum, of course. A deal? It's underperforming. I see potential where you see a burden. Let me buy it. I need to prove my acumen in business to my father. Acquiring your ventures could be mutually beneficial. I get some assets into my portfolio, and you get additional finances. For all your interests. And why should I trust you of all people? Our families may be allies, but that hardly makes us friends. Because, Ilara, I'm offering you a chance to rid yourself of a burden while lining your pockets. Isn't that what you want? Hmm, it is tempting. But why should I make it easy for you? Think about it, Ilara. It's free money for you. No strings attached. Ilara considers his proposition, weighing her disdain for responsibility against her love for wealth and power. Let me think. I'm not easily swayed, Caius. If you want my assets, you'll have to do better than a simple proposition. A challenge, then. We'll discuss terms soon. I assure you, it'll be worth your while. Ilara and Caius agree to a meeting to further discuss the business deal. The faint music from the ballroom creates a serene ambiance. Would you honor me with a dance? Alara smiles subtly and accepts. They begin to dance, their movements graceful and synchronized to the distant melody. Dancing here, away from prying eyes, feels liberating, doesn't it? The moonlight casts a gentle glow on them as they move in harmony. Indeed. As the last notes of the melody fade into the night, Ilara and Caius slow their dance to a stop. Ilara releases her hold, 
stepping back slightly while still maintaining eye contact with Caius. Well, Lord Marlowe, I must say you've surprised me. You are a good dancer. Caius, his usual strict demeanor softened, offers a genuine smile, his eyes reflecting the moonlight. Of course, I learned from the best. The moment lingers for a beat longer before they both turn to gaze out at the night. After their business discussion, Elara feels a bit emboldened by the thrill of the night. How about a walk in the maze, Caius? It's a lovely night, after all. A walk sounds pleasant, Lady Elara. The night is indeed beautiful. They venture into the maze, the moon casting long shadows between the hedges. The night is alive with the distant sounds of music and laughter from the ballroom. Elara feels curious about Caius, but she knows he is not the one to open up easily. She can use her new abilities she learned from her teacher, but she would not be able to use them again before she rests. What do I want to do? Hilara decides to probe into Caius's past. Using her newfound abilities, she focuses, reaching out with her essence. Caius, have you ever truly embraced life's pleasures? Freed yourself from the shackles of duty? My responsibilities always come first, but why do you ask? As Ilara's essence intertwines with his, she feels a subtle shift. Caius's demeanor softens, a veil lifting from his guarded nature. I'm curious to know if you've ever let your hair down, experienced the joys of life without restraint. Well, there have been moments, rare fleeting ones where I felt Free. Ilara senses a rare vulnerability in Caius's voice, his usual confidence faltering. Tell me about those moments. What brings you true joy? I suppose the thrill of a challenge, the satisfaction of achieving what others deem impossible. But such moments are scarce. Caius seems momentarily lost in thought, his usual self-assurance giving way to introspection. I must admit, Alara, this conversation is unlike any we've had before. It's unsettling, yet refreshing. Alara decides that she has pushed his boundaries enough for this time. The walk through the maze is tranquil, the moon illuminating their path. This maze always brings a sense of peace. It is a nice change from the chaos of the ballroom. They reach a stunning fountain at the maze's heart its waters sparkling under the moonlight. I wonder what expression Caius would make if he fell into the fountain. Let me think. Caius, you really should see the view from here. She looks up to him with longing eyes, ushers him closer, then with a quick move pushes him into the fountain. Caius loses his balance, slipping into the fountain with a surprised yelp. Alara, this is hardly amusing. Oh, come on, Caius, it's just water. Caius, his outfit now drenched, stands up in the fountain, water dripping from his clothes. He looks at Ilara, a mix of frustration and amusement in his eyes. You think you're clever, don't you? I do have my moments. Caius looks at himself, drenched in water. Then he looks at Ilara. Alara, you are too dry, don't you think? In a swift motion, Caius reaches out, grabbing Alara's hand and pulling her into the fountain with him. Alara lands in the water with a splash, both of them now soaked. She bursts into laughter, the sound echoing through the maze. Well played, Lord Marlowe. Seems we're both victims of the night now. The two of them stand in the fountain, their laughter mingling with the sound of splashing water. Caius, though initially irritated, can't help but be charmed by Alara's carefree laughter. You're full of surprises, Lady Alara. Life's too short for predictability. The rain begins to fall, adding to the whimsy of the moment. 
They both look up, letting the raindrops mix with the fountain spray. Seems we're in for a change of weather. The rain is growing stronger, yet neither seems to mind. After this unexpected dip in the fountain, Caius dripping wet, gestures subtly, using his carving skills to signal his page. I always come prepared for an unexpected situations. Moments later, a young page scurries towards them with a set of dry clothes. I must admit, this evening turned out to be more entertaining than I expected. Elara's maid arrives back from the mansion with a new dress. It is still black, as this is the only color Elara wore for a while. I have witnessed her lady's escapades before. She has a mixture of resignation and amusement on her face. Lady Elara, I should have known you'd find some adventure. We shall continue our discussion tomorrow, Lady Elara. Despite his outward annoyance, there's an undeniable spark of joy in Caius's eyes. I look forward to it, Lord Marlow. With a nod, Caius departs, leaving Alara with her maid. Shall we head back, my lady? The carriage is waiting. Yes, let's. This evening has been full of surprises. They make their way to the back side of the mansion, where their carriage awaits, discreetly positioned for a quick departure. Alara climbs into the carriage, the maid following closely behind. Inside the carriage, Ilara changes out of her clothes, her mind replaying the night's events. Tonight was a rare blend of chaos and charm, just the way I like it. It's always an adventure with you, Lady Ilara. The carriage rolls through the streets, the rain softly pattering against the windows. I suppose it's time to retire for the night. The maid nods, a smile on her lips, accustomed to her lady's unpredictable nature. As you wish, my lady. The carriage continues its journey, the city's lights fading into the distance as they head toward the Valtor estate. As the carriage rolls on, Elara's thoughts linger on Caius and the upcoming business discussion, a small smile playing on her lips. Tomorrow indeed. Business and pleasure often intertwine in the most interesting ways. The carriage moves smoothly, carrying them through the night the rain's gentle rhythm lulling Alara into a reflective silence. With the rain's melody as her lullaby, Ilara drifts into a peaceful rest, her mind dancing with the memories of a night not soon forgotten. Ilara peacefully dozed off with the rocking of the carriage. The carriage suddenly stops. What should I do? Diet Lara was always a bit average in physical training. She hears some footsteps. It sounds like there are at least three people outside. Maid whispers in fright. Lady Alara, what do we do? What do I want to do? Run after me. We'll get through this together. Alara pulls the maid out of the carriage, quickly assessing the situation. Ilara realizes that facing multiple assailants directly is suicidal. I need to think this through. Taking advantage of the chaos, Ilara slips out of the carriage. Ilara pulls on the maid to run with her, but the maid suddenly slips out of Ilara's grip and runs to the left. Wait! Ilara, not sure why the maid runned off, decided to save herself first. She continues to run to the right. Ilara moves stealthily, her thoughts racing. The assailants are still in confusion. Who would target her like this? Ilara suddenly feels somebody tackles her, and she falls onto the ground. Crash! Ah. Uh. Here you are. Lara sees the attacker taking his sword and rising it to hit her. What do I want to do?
Ilara does not fare well under such pressure. She is accustomed to the life of luxury. The attacker heavily wounds her in her shoulder and arm. Hilara can't think straight, but she manages to somehow tackle her attacker and barely escape, blood dripping onto her dress. Uh. Uh. Bleeding and exhausted, Ilara narrowly escapes her pursuers. Could it be my teacher? Is he silencing me? The rain starts again, blending with the blood from her wounds. Elara can hear the flap of the wings of tracking her apparitions. These creatures! I can't stay in one place! I need to move! Elara, bleeding and breathless, finds solace against a tree in a secluded part of the forest. Elara notices a raven tracking apparition landing on a tree branch nearby. Its red eyes are almost laughing, watching her. She notices that four silhouettes step out of the darkness. It was hard to track you. You'd be as elusive as a mermaid's kiss in a storm. Wonder how pretty lady tastes. I need to think this through. You, big guy, do you know what would happen to you all if the word of this gets out? Two of the attackers slightly waver and look at each other, pausing. Suddenly, one of the attackers turns on the others by knocking one down. Uh. Was I that charming that you went to my side? Ilara looks at the new helper with distrust. Looks like you could use some help. Clara and new helper back out from attackers together. The new helper throws a punch into another person. <clears throat> and you are? Alara barely evades an earth spike. Looks like he is a carver. She winces from her wounds. Uh. Tristan Bellamy, at your service. Ah, yes. The jokester of the ballroom. I heard of you. Amidst the chaos, Tristan and Alara fight back to back, their banter laced with sarcasm and tension. Hopefully you heard only good things about me. Tristan manages to knock out the old man. <clears throat> Tracking apparitions become restless on the tree branches. I need to make a choice. Nice to meet you in such unique circumstances. I always enjoy a good fight, especially with a partner as unpredictable as you. The battle rages on with Alara and Tristan displaying a fierce synergy. The last carver standing launches an earth-piercing attack, which aims at Tristan's head. Ah! Ilara pushes Tristan out of the way. Damn you! Bear-like man tries to launch another attack, now aimed at Ilara. But Tristan is faster. With a swift move, he dispatches the bear man. As the final attacker falls, Ilara and Tristan stand amidst the aftermath, their gazes locked in a mix of curiosity and respect. The assaulants are lying on the ground, either moaning from pain or out of it completely. Ilara and Tristan are heavily breathing and looking warily around them, ready for any surprises. Thanks for that. I try. So, Tristan Bellamy? A tale for another time. Right now we should get out of here. Ilara nods, her mind racing with questions about her unexpected ally and the forces that seem hell-bent on her demise. <laughs> <laughs>